It's time for EdTech Mondays, brought to you by MasterCard Foundation and CC Hub. Welcome to another amazing episode of the EdTech Mondays Nigeria show. I am Chinyolu Akwa, your host as always, and it's good to be back here today. Thank you for tuning in again. If you are a returning listener, thank you so much. And if this is your first time, just take a seat and enjoy the conversations we'll be having today because I know we'll have you hooked. On the show today, we explore the topic, evaluating the impact of artificial intelligence on education. And we'll be taking it from a teacher's point of view. We have here a mathematics teacher and the head of the department junior school at Holy Child College, Ikoi, Lagos. This guest is a black belt holder of the 1 million teachers and presently a mentor in the HIPMAT 5.0. She is a member of the Teachers Lounge by Co-Creation Hub and has earned different awards, including the Best Teacher 2022-2023 session and the first runner-up in the Schooler Lessington Contest 2023 for the innovative and consistent use of Cori AI, an artificial intelligence tool by Schooler. Our guest today is Oluwatobi Babatunde. Hello, Oluwatobi. It's good to have you here. There is a general misconception that artificial intelligence would take the jobs of teachers. Uluwatoni, do you agree? Yes or no? <laughs> what do you think? Um, it's... Is AI going to take your job? Do you, do you subscribe to the school of thought that one day you will wake up and you are jobless? There's no more work for you at Holy Child College because there is a robot in the classroom that is now teaching mathematics to students which is the picture people paint when they think about artificial intelligence. Yeah, that, that is um, very much possible for people to think about that. But then it's, it's not going to take over the job. Um, it's only there to complement. Um, we are the human that can undo it. We are to work with it as in using it to um, teach appropriately we are to modify the use of it okay so i have some you know, introductory introductory questions i put down here i said how do you deal with homework that might have been done by a chat gpt or by you know an ai tool you would agree with me that there are fundamental and important and very urgent issues to address with teachers attitude to technology so let's dive right into this big ocean of many questions. It's very rare and very interesting to see young people like you in teaching. So before I start asking you all the questions, I wish all our listeners, those who are listening to us on radio, could see how young you are. So what was the motivation and inspiration to choose this career path before we even begin to talk about the influence or the impact of AI? on teaching? Why teaching? Why not a job in an oil company in Bonny Island? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good question. Um, the motivation for me is mathematics itself. Um, you guys should see my face, right? <laughs> <laughs> is mathematics itself. Um, I so much love it and, um, interested in it so much that it's something easy for me and um you just it's of less stress <laughs> yeah so th there's not much words like um reading through before i can catch what i need to know and it's it's just pretty easy for me another thing is um to help the unlearned yes reaching out to people how can I do that? That can only be done through education, through teaching. And it's not just starting now. It started a long time ago. You really need to check on you. You just start off, they'll put different things and tell them, repeat after me. It just, just started, it started long ago. Wow. 
um, in primary school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when mom and my sister are cooking, I will be there gathering children, um, little children in the neighborhood and putting them through things like subjects in maths, like maths and maybe English or something. But then I'm so much interested in helping them to learn. So I, I feel this, this has been the drive so long. Okay, thank you uh, for taking us down your memory lane <laughs> yeah. on how you ventured into education. I see that it's something you always wanted to do. And because you loved mathematics, you went to teach people mathematics, you stayed teaching mathematics. You didn't veer off at any point. So yeah. kudos to you. So now in an age where different professionals worry about artificial intelligence, Tell us your take and your experience as a teacher. Because it's just coming and then the orientation generally. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think we need to reorientate ourselves as teachers that this is not just something to take me off balance. Yeah, so it's nothing to worry about really. It's a tool for everybody to work with and it's meant to be a um, an aid for the teachers, not something coming to take your place or making you scared that what will I do or what can I do about it? So yes, I see it as a tool, generally speaking, that we can make use of as teachers to aid learning. Okay. Yeah. And being that you're a teacher, ha have you experienced any scenarios where you have students, maybe they have submitted 10 papers or assignments and... You can tell that this child is not possible that you did this thing by yourself. <laughs> you did not. You had assistance and it was not a human assistance that gave you this sum. In fact, I told you to solve a simple thing and you're going to use quadratic equation to solve it. Yeah. Have you experienced this type of scenarios? And what's, how did you manage it? You know, being that there is that fear mm -hmm. that students will become lazy right and yeah. she's going to aid cheating exam or practice exactly. and for you the teacher you could yeah people would think teachers would just feel well there's no point <sighs> something else is going to teach them i might as well just go and sell do a trade sell something instead of focusing on being it just so how did you handle have you experienced something like that did you yeah it? yeah thank you very much i can recall right now oh, I, yeah, please take yeah, I, had a, I had an experience like that and when i saw the results the um, assignment I was like this is not your work <laughs> so I, I told the students it's it's what it was a one-on-one -on -one, um, session so I told the students this is not your work what did you do you used EI you used chat GPT you used this and the student was like insisting yeah <laughs> no this when I caught the student the students could you couldn't do any anything anymore so the student was like Yes, is I don't know what it is, so I just have to, I just have to do that because I knew you were going to ask for the assignment, and I was like, that means the the the, the idea is is not right. So I had to address the student that you using this is not to um, change your own I um, knowledge or to shift it, your own knowledge off what you know, but it's just to help you. And um, it's, it's to aid your own creativity. So in managing that, I will um, encourage teachers or like generally that we can tell the students it's a tool for them to make use of as well. But then it's to broaden their mind, their minds rather, and it will help them to see how creative they can be. You know, when they ask the question using AI, it will take them away from what they could ever think of. And um, when they see that, it, it spores the interest in them. And then they're like, oh, really? So this thing can be done this way. So this can be done this way. So it's for us to encourage them. It's not for you not to use it. It's not that you are copying. Yes, because if they don't have the orientation, it ends up becoming a copy and paste one mm -hmm. for them. So to just let them know you don't need to copy it. Just look at the idea. Look at what is being thrown to you and build yours from it yes uh, there's, there's something that i know that i touched on it when i was asking the question and you also uh, mentioned it knowing your students capabilities no ai would do that for you yeah, no sure do that for you so it still ties light on the teachers you know um strength to understand what every learner's capacity is knowing where they are and being able to identify 
you know, that they can't do these things themselves. And also sure. then places the burden on you to want to do better because if you know that you gave out a sum yeah. and your students couldn't solve it and ran to, yeah. you know, yeah. a tool to help them. So then it tells you that they have not gotten that That's concept true. correctly. Yeah. So you have to go back to do your work again and do it better this time around. Yes. And so with everything you've said, it means you do not subscribe because there's also a school of thought that says we should limit the entry age or the use age for AI for students. So do you feel that we should open it up? Everybody can use it. Be you in the primary school if you can, you know, use it or in the secondary school or in university. So you think that there should be an age cap, you know, an age limit suitable for, not suitable for children below three years, not suitable for children below primary six. Is that necessary or do we open it up to everyone? I would go with giving it an age cap, mm. like age cap for them because light. Yeah. <sighs> The reason is it might look too easy for some students if they don't really know why. Okay. If they don't know why they want to use it, if they see it as a run to tools, mm. like they are running to it to just get something and then they run off. But when they are on the, maybe in a particular age that is full of understanding, maybe a bit, and they, are, they already know what is better off, they can be able to differentiate Oh, this is my work. This is that work. Okay, how can I merge it together to bring something good out of it? But if they are all from, if it's just Maybe all from age, age, ages where they are still trying to figure things to out. To figure things, yes. And even to, to put their words together, they don't know how to do that yet. And you're telling them to use AI. Definitely, they will just go there and copy and paste. Mm. To you, our listeners, I'd like to hear from you at this point. <laughs> do you think we need to put an age cap? or an age limit to when learners can access AI tools? Do you think we should put age limits to who can use AI tools? Maybe you have to be three years, you have to be five years, you have to be in primary school mm -hmm. before you can start accessing AI tools. I would love to hear from you. Send us an SMS or a WhatsApp message right now, 0703. One six five zero eight zero nine. Do you think we need to have age limits to access AI tools for students? Back to you, um, Uluwatobi. Yes. So, what skills and attitudes should teachers embrace to use artificial intelligence? It's artificial intelligence. We need emotional intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> I like yes. that. Yes, we need we need mm -hmm. that. And we need our creative tools as well, our creative skills. Mm. Yes, because when it brings it out, it brings out the results. Probably you need to search for something like why teaching math? I can search for a topic mm -hmm. and ask questions. Oh, how is it related to life? Mm -hmm. I need to understand why and how I can bring it together to my students. Because, you know, AI can bring it in a general form. I need to bring it down to my own students so for them to understand what is happening. So we need the creative tools also. It's not just for the AI to do it for us, but then after doing it, we still need to be creative. How to adjust, modify, edit, mm. and the likes, yes. So teachers need to learn. Yes. They need to go back to school. Yeah. You need to learn. They're going back to doesn't mean like actual school, but they need to just learn. Yes. That's learn why you have the internet. internet. Learn how to do new things. Yeah. So thank you, Oluwatobi. Are there any parting words for teachers across Nigeria? Yeah, my parting word for everybody is AI has come to stay, but it's for us to embrace it. And the better we do, the better it is for us. The earlier we do, the better it is for us. So I'll say it's high time for more creativity and then we can do it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Back to you, our listeners. Back to my question. Do we need age limits for accessing artificial intelligence tools when it comes to learners? If you're a parent, how comfortable are you allowing your children access AI tools? Should they start using AI tools once they know how to use their phones? If you're a teacher, you're a, you're a, you're a school leader, do you think... There is a need to put an age limit or to put age limits to the use of AI tools for students. 
Do we open it up? Do we close it a little bit? I'd love to hear from you. Send us an SMS or a WhatsApp message 0703-165-0809. We would love to hear from you. And if you know anyone who, for any reason, missed today's episode, they have to listen again. Push them to listen on Spotify at Tech Mondays Nigeria, or they can watch us and see how much fun we had making this happen at CC Hub Africa. This episode and all other episodes from the past are on there. You could also join our Telegram and WhatsApp channels at EdTech Mondays Nigeria to continue the conversation after we've left your airwaves. It has been an amazing and really exciting episode on the EdTech Mondays Nigeria. And until I come your way next week, same session, same time, I remain Chinyelo Akwa. Continue to use technology to test and push the frontiers in education. Bye for now. EdTech Monday is proudly brought to you by Mastercard Foundation and CC Hub.